Well, today on Nation Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about why your website sucks. What is wrong with it and why should you change it? What should you change about it? How do we break it down? We're going into a little bit of a slower time, so let's talk about it. Stay tuned, WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Have a look around. Seven and a half years of this. First time here. You have a ton of content. If you're not a first timer and you've been here a bunch of times, thank you so much for being amazing. Well, today we're talking about why your website sucks. And there's actually kind of a few reasons why. Um, I look at websites a lot. And a lot of you have sent me your websites and said, hey, look at this. And I always tell you the things that I see wrong with it more than I tell you the good things. Because there's a lot of good things in websites, but I'm not really a yes man. I don't want to tell you all the good things. That doesn't help you be better. It's the bad things that you should change. And there's a few of them that I see on almost every single website. And I understand why they're there, but you have to understand the reason and the way your website works. Now, there's two things with websites. There is the front end, user experience, right? What do they get out of it, right? That's how you're driving the traffic. What are you telling them? Uh, how are you convincing them? And how are you getting them to buy? And then there's the back end, which is the SEO and the, uh, the verbiage and the words and the way that it can be crawled and the content and all that that has so much to do with having them find your website. A lot of people, a lot of people know this, but uh, there's it's a surprising amount of people don't understand how websites are found. If you just type in, say, window cleaning in my town or whatever, you're going to pull up every website that is ranked anywhere close to there. And it may not even be your site. And you're like, well, what the heck? I'm in my town. It may be on the third page. You're like, oh, there I am. But the reason is, is that you're not ranked up because Google wants to have the best experience for their customers. Keep people coming back to Google. That's why Google won over Ask Jeeves, Bing, Yahoo. Like it's just better to use Google, right? You probably agree with that if you're old enough. Well, that's what they want. That's what they strive for. So they put the websites that are the best experience or the best connection to people always up front. And that's SEO, search engine optimization. Really kind of not the SEO itself, but why it's getting ranked. Okay. The first thing you need to look at in your website is back to user experience and back end. And it's the text. The text of the site is absolutely important. So many people put stuff out there and they try to put out this like, professional, over the top kind of feel to it. And a big problem with that is when you're using filler words, right? Like, uh, you know, we we make your windows shine or uh, ready to clean off winter's dirt. You're advertising like it's a radio commercial. And that's not what it is. You have to convey a message or specifics to somebody and they will think the rest. You are not able to put it out there with all these filler words with, you know, um, be the envy of your neighborhood with the, that doesn't trigger anything for them and it doesn't trigger anything for SEO or for the web crawlers or for Google or any of that. All it is is filler words and the more words you have, the less people will read it. If they look at something and it's a like a, a book, they're like, oh, I'm not even going to read it. I'm not even going to start reading it. So what do we do? Instead of having filler text, we direct their eyes. We want to have simple quick bullet points. We want to have easy to navigate sites. So if I do want to know more about a certain thing, I don't want to have everything listed. If you put in the first thing is, where are the areas best? Window cleaning, pressure washer, house sash, yourself, big list. You're not getting random people. You're just showing everybody you're not a master of your trade. And you know you are. So what you need to do in a website is focus on the text. Give them exact information. Let them do the, their filler. They can fill it with their stuff. But then on the opposite side of it is filler just adds words that make things complicated. If you want something to be read, make it simple, bullet points, bold, boom. 
If they go to your website and there's a picture of you cleaning a normal window, not a mansion, not a 20 story, not a bragging picture, a picture that just says window cleaning. The customer looks at that and goes, oh, okay, they instantly sees window cleaning and they can read the bullet points. The biggest thing in the base, first part on your website is, you know, um, why choose us? And it is literally bullet points of 100% satisfaction guarantee. And then not in bold says, you don't pay a dime unless you're happy. Next bullet point, we're fully insured. That's in bold. In little, little uh, or uh, non-bolded text, it says, we carry a $2 million insurance policy. We've never claimed anything on it, but it's there for your protection. Something along those lines. The next bullet point, seven-day rain guarantee Non-bold. Yes, we are the only company in the area that guarantees against Mother Nature. Right? Remember what we're doing here. We are not creating unnecessary filler because the term is seven-day rain guarantee. The filler comes in if they want to read more, they read the next part. We're the only company that against uh, uh, Mother Nature. If you start that, and it's all in a paragraph, and you go... We're the only company in XYZ town that, uh, you know, will guarantee against the harsh conditions of Mother Nature. No matter if it's wind, rain, if it's all of that, they're not going to read that. They're not coming to read a book. They're coming to just know the information and then pique their interest. If you pique their interest, they'll read more. There's so many people have these big fillers and there's this big paragraph. You get on the site and it says, we are the area's leading window cleaning company. has been in service for very long and we make your windows sparkle like no one's else. You know, uh, see through your windows, not at your windows with our latest tech. You lose them. You lose them. So your text has to be absolutely specific. The images should always be fresh. Now, your images on your website, you do not have to change every day, but they do have to change like once a month. Not even change, just add stuff. Fresh content helps you rank. So your pictures have to have something to do with the actual service. That's the key. So think about every website you've ever gone on for like e-commerce or just sites that are really good. There's like text, but pictures, maybe some graphics to keep you interested in reading different things, but it's not too busy. If you have reasons why, put pictures. Remember, you're trying to sell to everybody. So your pictures should be basically a normal or below normal house, not a mansion. You're proud of that. I'm proud of you. The internet probably loves it, all the other window cleaners, but they can't connect. They go, well, this guy does mansions. He's not going to want to do my little house. Absolutely. And the guy with the mansion is going to look at that and not be impressed at all because he's not going to be like, well, they could do that house. They could do mine. No, he is very specific on his. He's got the best. Well, what's this other house? Like, this does not translate. So you're not actually talking to anybody by doing that. A general picture, if somebody's got a mansion, they see this go, oh man, this guy's doing these houses, the guy looks super professional, he could do mine. Hey, I got a really big house for you. Now they want to give that to you. Your pictures are just a connection point. Visual is just like audio, is just like, you know, touch. All the senses you have should be there. Visual is like pictures that look awesome. They're eye-catchy, but you don't get lost. A lot of times you have these really artsy pictures that look great, but you can't really tell what they are. The customer can't tell what they are. They need to instantly see, recognize, understand, and more importantly, get intrigued. I should be able to look at your website within five seconds. I should have all the information I needed when I came to the website. If you don't believe that, look at something called a bounce rate. If you have analytics, which I hope if you have a website, you have analytics embedded into that. But look at your analytics and look at your bounce rate. Those are people who jumped on and went, ooh, it's not for me, jumped off right away. Keeping people there means they're interested and they're actually seeing stuff. No one's reading your book. No one's reading your your novel. 
No one is listening to all that. If they do want to know any more about it, they click the About Us page. Then you can put a little paragraph or a couple paragraphs about you and your family and pictures and there's who we are. But that's if they want to know that, they'll go there. Don't feed them that on the first page. They're there to learn about your company and more importantly, they're there to book something and that's where call of action comes in. The call to action on your website needs to be absolutely everywhere and it has to be very compelling. There's so many people who, oh, I've got this template. Their phone number is nowhere. You can barely see it. Their name is super small. Their logo is shrunk because they don't know how to grow it or make it big or any of that. They don't have the words window cleaning at the top, so you can't even know. It takes you, you know, three minutes to even figure out what the heck they do. You need to have all of that there and calls to action. The call to action is the button to get them to fill out the thing or to make the call or to send the text to book, to book through Calendly. Whatever you're using to get people to book, you have to have somebody to boom. Right? Call blah, blah, blah for your instant 60-second quote over the phone. Your instant no obligation quote that's good for up to six months whatever instant that's one call to action oh cool i just get a quote right maybe one of your calls to action is a page on there that gives generals right you want to know what it'll cost you click here and Check from your size of your home or whatever. And you got three different ones. Small, medium, large. Here's the prices. Prices per windows. Maybe you're using responsive bid. Fantastic. Maybe they can do their own bid. But a call to action. They're on your website. Now it's up to you to make that connection. To make them want to buy. If they're on your website and they look and, well, this is really cool. And they leave your website. Then none of that did anything. You failed. Your website failed. Remember, you're proud of things in your company. We do these big buildings. You're proud of that. But a customer does not think about it as in they're proud of you. They need to be sold. They need to know why you are the best. That's the USP. You got to put it on there. Putting it onto the site with a call to action, with a genuinely good trigger, with pictures, with simple bullet points that within five seconds I know what you do and why I should choose you. And then at the very end, of their entire glance, it could be within 10 seconds or 10 minutes. They need to know why it would be ridiculously stupid to hire anybody else but you. Why you? Oh, all this stuff is great. I gotta get a quote from these guys. Like this is the the, the entire way that a website works. And a lot of people just were like, I just put put so much information. But it doesn't work that way. Nobody wants to go there and read about filler words and cliche sales terms. It's just none of that. So why would you put it on there? It doesn't help the crawler. doesn't help the experience. The best websites are ones that are just easy, fast, quick. You know when you go on an e-commerce site and they have flashing pictures right away with the specials? Well, guess what? Specials are why people will check out websites on a regular. If they need to order something, yeah, let's see what's on sale. It's always there. That is the experience of the website. Now, you can do the exact same with yours. But if you're just looking at it as a very big brochure, that's part of it, but no. A brochure doesn't actually end in a sale, but a website does. Now, everything you do is pushing traffic to your website. If you hand out business cards or flyers or door hangers or EDDMs or any of that stuff, even your Facebook page, click here to book now, and it brings them to your website. So your website should be absolutely functional but remember, it is a machine to get new customers. It is a information machine for customers who just want to call you. Oh, yeah, look at these guys. I got to get their number real quick, click their website. If it's not right there, you've lost them. Don't make something harder for people. The harder something is, the less people will do it. It's a fact. That's just human nature. Anyway, real quick, I want to jump off and say that today's episode was brought to you by me, Jersey. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. 
Uh, shameless plug, as you know, I would love to put your order in. All orders, I mean, every single order that I put in, I get credit for, and it costs you not one penny more. And I can add your free gifts. If there's any sales, I can do that. If there's anything, I can do that. Check your fitment, answer questions. I would love to be your rep. Please save my number, 862-312-2026. I know there's a bunch of great reps. I want to be your rep for life. So please give me the opportunity. I would love nothing more than to do that. Um, you can even save it, put it in your cart, and then um, tell me it's in your cart. So, Also, if you haven't yet checked out American Window Cleaner Magazine, Big things are happening in that magazine. It's absolutely changed. It's phenomenal. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, it is a magazine. Paper real shows up to your door with stickers every month. Go to awcmag.com. If you're out in the field right now, just type that in. AWC for the American Window Cleaner Magazine. MAG for magazine. Dot com and just get a subscription 69 bucks it's for the entire year and you would be absolutely amazing to do that so um thank you shameless plug done tried to make it short for you um but genuinely i would like to have money to live and buy name brand crackers and name brand bandages and everything else you guys tell me i could buy shameless plug there you go 862-312-2026 is my cell okay so you know the text is important. You know the pictures are important. You know the trigger is important. But what else can there be? Like, what else could be found on a website? Now, think about this. If you're looking for anything, this could be not window cleaning, but say you're looking for a plumber. Genuinely, think about what you're looking for if you went to their website, you found their listing, you clicked on it and went to the website, what are you looking for? You're probably looking for ballpark prices, right? You're probably looking for the, the, the you know, product or something to kind of show you they know that they would be doing the thing that they're doing, right? Maybe you go to that and subliminally you want to see a picture with 10 trucks or logo and a letter trucks or... Texts that look amazing. They're like, wow, these guys are clean cut. They really look like they're doing something. You go to another website and it's a picture of some guy with a, a winter hat half cocked over with a cigarette in his mouth and a dirty car heart on. And you're like, oh, that's the guy that's coming to my house? Uh, nah. What are you looking for? Because in everything and anything, the why is the most important part. Why would somebody buy? Why would somebody go to your website? Why would somebody benefit from your website? If you figure that out, you know what to do. If you can figure out why somebody's on your website, you know how to talk to them. If they're there because they want to get a quick quote, if they're there because they want to get a price, if they're there with anything. Maybe you start off for the tire kickers. You go, okay, people come there, my website, I think they're looking for pricing. Perfect. Very big top block. It says fall special, 20 windows for $2.99. Something like that. Well, that could be clickable. There could be a button below that that says book before we're out of spots for this year or book before the holidays. Or, you know, we can book up to whatever the call to action is from the thing that they have. They won't even look at any of the other site they saw it. If that's why you think they're there, put it out there. If you have something on your site and you put it out and you're like, yeah, people come for pricing. So I'm going to tell them all about myself. And then at the very bottom, I'll say, send me an email with your address and your name and how many windows you have. And I'll get back to you with the price. If you make it so hard, they're not doing it. And you're like, oh yeah, I get some traffic from the website. Not a lot though, I don't think my custom, no, your website sucks. There's no call to action. There's no anything. If it's so hard, they have to go jump through all these hoops to try to get you to tell them a price. If they think for a second that you're gonna get stuck on the phone with the salesman, if they think for a second that when they tell you or talk to you that you're gonna try to upsell them everything else and they're somehow obligated or they gotta pay for the quote or they gotta do whatever, they got make it simple. 
everybody is holding themselves back from doing something until the point they do it. If you put, get a quote for your house over the phone in 60 seconds with no obligation. Cool, call, I got a minute. Yeah, no obligation. I'm not gonna get hassled. They'll give me a quick price. If it's that simple, they know it's that simple, they can call. If in your head you're like, it's just simple. All they gotta do is just, they go to this thing and then they click on this button and then they jump in here and then they do this and then uh, everything, they get a price. Well, nobody is spending that much time. They don't want to, they want ease. If you're easy, they use you. Keep it simple, stupid, kiss. It's big. Websites are one of those things. Websites are made for conversion. There's a lot of information on websites, real information in its own page, if somebody wants to know. The information is just to answer their questions to make them comfortable so that they buy. Every person who's on your website wants window cleaning, for the most part. Most people are not looking up window cleaning websites just to see. They want window cleaning. What's your conversion rate? If you get 100 people on your website in a day, 100 of those people should be calling or booking with you. Now, that figure, of course, is impossible, I think, to do 100% all the time, but that's the theory. Everybody's there for window cleaning. Why did so-and-so leave? Why did out of those 100, I got two phone calls? Why did the 98 people leave? Did they go, no, oh, you know what? I don't want window cleaning. No, nah, I like dirty windows. No, nah, you know, I'm sitting here doing this stuff and it's in my head so much that I just decided, no, nah, I don't want it. No. Something did not trigger a purchase. They just didn't want to buy. What was it? Why did they come to the site? What did they not get? What did they not know or where did they get lost? Because if they're confused and there's too much info, they leave somewhere else. They go to the next one. You've done it, I've done it. We've all done that. So to the point, specific, and sell by information. Tell them everything they need to know or any concerns are handled and answered so that they're like, eh, I have no holdups, let's do it. It's just that simple. And a lot of people kind of like to do this like brag thing, right? But how do you how do you put new content out? What, what content do you put on the website? I don't want it to look like nothing. Well, no, you don't have to look like nothing. Have a professional do your website if you can. There's so many faux pas and, and ways and flows and websites in general across the board, 100% in any industry have a flow of work. They know what people read, when they read it, why they click, what makes it. There's enough websites out there. They have that data. You try to reinvent it and come up with your own thing like you're smarter than the entire last 20 years of websites just isn't a thing. You have to do your website according to how websites work. Don't put something there and go, oh, I like that. Another thing with websites that helps for customer experience is symmetry. Symmetry and white space are important. If you just fill everything up and there's packed in stuff and blocks of information and everything is, you know, aligned funky and it's, that doesn't feel good to somebody. If it doesn't feel good, subliminally, they don't know why, but they'll leave. It's the Comic Sans joke. You know, everybody's like, well, don't use Comic Sans. It's because that is like old school 1990s computer, you know, text and it makes people feel uncomfortable. You go, well, yeah, I'm just a window cleaner. None of the stuff exists. Yes, it does. It 100% it, it exists in every industry, including window cleaning. Symmetry makes it look good. It's simple. You can direct traffic, their eyes. You can direct their eyes and the traffic to where you want it to look or click or do all by the coloring and the sizes and don't make it look like a pinata went off. You want it to make it so that they are following where you want them to follow. The first thing they see is the biggest bull is there. Window cleaning. But I do pressure. Yeah, I know, but they came to your window cleaning website. All their services, there's tabs for pressure washing if they're there for that. What's your bread and butter? That's what you're advertising. The rest of it is going to be a side note for when people need that. 
We're talking about the biggest bang that we can create. Symmetry in the pictures and the flow and the feel keep people there. And if they keep people there, they get more and more answers and they want to be done with it by clicking, get a quote, book, whatever your button is. The most important thing on any website, though, is that people have to find it. The metadata has to be there. The backlinking has to be there. The text has to be there. The Everything that is set up to be found has to be there, including SEO. Now, every company is different in where they are to invest in themselves, okay? So I always say this with a caveat. You can do this by yourself. It's not gonna be really anywhere close, but if you got the cheddar in the budget, the best thing you could ever do is hire a company to do your SEO. And now what they're doing is they're not only designing, if they're building your website, which you guys know, I always talk about Monk, 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 bleh, Monk SEO. They do websites and SEO, and I imagine a lot of them companies would do that. But they build the website because they know flow, they know the back end, they know what the text should say, where it should say it, and where your triggers to buy are. Now, if you have that built, but now you put in SEO, meaning they find it, you're now ranking one on Google. You're now ranking on the first page of Google and not from some weird guy who can't speak English that called you and said, for $29, you could be on the first page of Google. Oh, well, it's worth a try. They don't do anything. I'm talking about real SEO. Real active SEO is the greatest thing you could ever do for your company, but it's an investment. If you're like, man, I got like 10 grand for the entire year budget. What should I do? My first answer would be SEO. But that would be the whole 10 grand. Yep, there you go, boom. Rest of it can be free stuff. There will not be anything that is out there getting you continuous work than your website being found. That is middle of the night, during the day, whatever. Now, if the SEO is on point, which takes time and it has to always be running, you can't just do it, oh man, I'm good, let's stop. That's not how SEO works. It's not like a destination. It's to continue to keep you up because everybody else is also SEOing. If you get there and they're to your website and all of those things we talked about, meaning the, the look is there, the feel is there, they know what you're doing, it triggered to buy. Those conversions are phenomenal. If you have a dog water website and you do really great SEO and they go there and they're like, uh, go to somewhere else. Well, it doesn't matter. You got them there, but nah. Just a rule of numbers means you'll have people close even on a dog water website, but you want to have both. SEO, no matter what the site though, will be more important than anything else you do for your website. So many people are, are there, and this may be you, it may not be, and it doesn't matter if you want to be big, it doesn't matter if you want to be small, it doesn't matter whatever you want to do with your company. You want to have staff, you want to be by yourself, you just want to have less um, hard shape, hard uh, yeah, what am I thinking? You just want to have more time, more freedom, whatever it is. Whatever the reason is, that's for you, and it's totally cool. But if you want to get more customers, always be doing dentist clothes, blah, blah, blah. If you want to get more customers, the best thing you could possibly ever do is get SEO, by far, not even close. Now, I'll tell you one other thing to leave that on is... What do you do? Again, the why. What do you do if you want a thing? Say you want, you want to buy a smoker. What do you do? Do you pull out the newspaper? No, probably not. You go online and you type smokers and then you click shopping and it shows you all the way. But why do you think they're there? They're there because of their SEO and their ranking and how much they pay to be there. You're not just finding great things and just randomly like, oh, this guy doesn't care anything about his website, but somehow it ranked really well. No. If you want to go and get pizza, if you want a good steak, if you want ribs or who's got the best ribs in my town, right? If you're looking for a service of any kind, you Google it. You go on there and you search it. That is what most Everybody does now for any service, including window cleaning. 
So now you go, okay, great. Well, guess what? The people who want window cleaning are searching it online. This is where now I have to be found. Now, this is where SEO kind of comes back into two. It's like what terms, right? Window cleaning is different than window cleaner is different than window washing is different. But all of those terms are separate. You can't just be a window cleaner and then like, oh yeah, if anybody searches window cleaning, window cleaner, window cleanings, window washers, window squeaky, wind, like you, you do not have all the terms. You don't. No company ever anywhere. If you're paid SEO, paid ads, you may be ranking like a fish. They're national. They pay. If you type any of those, probably 20 keywords, they're buying and bidding on those. But like as a local real service, you're not. So you have to know that. Websites in general, no matter your area, no matter your clientele, no matter if you're in a rich area or a poor area, the psychology of websites is there. The understanding is there. You could do that no matter what. By the way, speaking of something else you could do, you can call me at 862-312-2026 for any supplies. I would love to put your orders in because I get credit and, you know, I uh, have to buy um, more hair gel. So, um, and a plethora of sweaters because I'm always cold. Go do that. 862-312-2026. Get the subscription to the magazine. I'm tired of telling you guys because I know it's amazing and I know you'll think so too. Just go to awcmag.com. Get the subscription. $69 for the whole year. 12 months. Shows up in your door all the time. It's great. Um, also, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to that, that would be great. It's Jersey underscore nation. It's my personal one, not the WCR one. But more importantly, hopefully you go out there. Hopefully you get yourself some good SEO. Monk SEO is uh, amazing. Or, more importantly, you get your website under control in general. But more importantly than that, hopefully you go out there and be epic.